Hello, 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 and welcome to this live watercolour workshop with me, Matthew Palmer. I'm just going to try and hello. <laughs> there we go. There it is. So there we have a piece of watercolour paper. Stuck to a board. This is a not surface watercolour paper, which means it's not rough, it's not smooth. It's quarter imperial. And just while I get a few bits prepped, I'm going to bring in some spooky Halloween props. We've got pound shop light up skulls. What more could you want? Got to do this. While that's happening, I'm going to take a piece of kitchen paper and a round coin and wrap the pound coin in some tissue. And that's going to give him the moon when that goes quiet. Should we throw that out the window? Turn off the pound shop skulls. We have more pound shop props. And um, we are going to start painting. Now, I've got plenty of water here. Or be it dirty water. That just, see, that just proves you don't need clean water. The palette I've cleaned especially for today. Yeah, um, and we've got plenty of kitchen paper. Brushes wise, I'm going to show you actually these these new brushes. These are my uh, these are my blending blades. Now, these are the brand new brushes that have recently come out, and these are made from a very stiff hair. It allows watercolor to mix. Quick Google search, you'll find these. Um, you can get them from the SAA at the minute. Uh, beautiful brushes, set of two, to allow the most common problem of all, which is blending paint. People have an issue of blending paint. So I'm using the largest of the brushes, and I'm gonna wet the paper throughout, okay? Full coverage. So if we just make sure it's all nicely covered. I don't wanna particularly saturate things. Um, this is a cotton paper, so, if you do buy watercolour paper, um, have a look for that 100% cotton. This is Matthew Palmer watercolour paper. It's a paper that I have been using for years and I'm very lucky that it's a paper that I work very closely with the manufacturer of, which is Claire Fontaine. Gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. Um, they sponsored me with this paper, so really, really pleased about it. Beautiful stuff, people love it. Stays wet for absolutely ages, it does. Now, talking about being wet, we need to make sure that we've got a complete coverage. The masking tape I've used is just a standard masking tape really. There we go. So we're pretty much covered. There's a few dry patches just here. And the first thing I want to do is bring in some, some warm, some light. Put the light in first. So in the palette I want to use this colour. Now this one is a light skin tone. This is, again it's part of the Matthew Palmer range but you can mix your own sort of peachy orange colour. Yellow with a bit of red will give you something not the same but similar. Now this colour doesn't have to be necessarily too strong, but I'm, I'm just going to layer it in, okay, with this 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 brush here, and I'll put a few twists in to give it some character, of course, so we can sort of work it through. Twist it in, which is important. Bring it down towards the bottom. This is the season for doing dark, dramatic skies, and the darkness will come later. Once that's in, I'm going to clean the brush and we are going to take some natural blue. Now, you could use any blue. Natural blue is a much brighter blue. It's a cleaner blue. It's a non-granulating blue as well, which makes a difference. But you could use something like ultramarine blue. And I'm going to start to twist in the colour, the blue. Now, as it mixes with the skin tone, you'll see it starts to go more of a grey. Give it a nice twist. Hence the pound coin or the round coin wrapped in tissue. Now I want to bring some of this blue down below because I want to get at the base. Can you see that you're getting more of a grey? So I'm using a blending brush to smooth the colours together. That's exactly what the brush is all about. Marvellous. Now it's now time to put the moon on. Now the moon is done very simply with a good strong uh, press of a round coin wrapped 
in some tissue. Choose somewhere fairly dark, press it firmly as you move. Beautiful. Now around, look at that, an old pound coin from 2000. Millennium. I know I found a use for them. Let's go for a good strong bit of grey. Now, this is my own grey, it's called natural grey, and don't be afraid to use this nice and heavy. This is where we're gonna get the moody Halloween theme from. Now, think about this color as a grey that's mixed from primary colors. You can mix your own course, you can blue, red, and yellow. That will give you this grey, okay? Try and avoid paints grey, it's too, too dark. Mix the greys are better. Natural grey, quick search online, um, you can buy it from Watercolor TV, watercolor.tv, which of course is, look at that beautiful over the moon. But of course is a place where there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of online tuition with yours truly, www.watercolor.tv. Have a look at that folks. Working this thing in here. So getting the drama, using this beautiful tip of the brush, it's a very unique angle, the blending blades. And it just means it's so versatile on brush. We've been developing these brushes for Correct It folks, so I'm very proud to bring you these brushes. This is the first time we've done anything uh, live or anything with the blending brushes working across. There you go, look at that beautiful drama. Let's go a little bit stronger with the colour. So I'm basically taking some more grey, but really getting it thick. Like I say, you can mix the grey, but it's the reason natural grey is so popular and it is one of the top selling watercolours that um, is available because it's so versatile. Everything has grey shadows in it. You really do need to get this, this sort of darkness coming through. Look at that beautiful darkness we're creating here. Now, these brushes, these blending blades are going to be perfect for softening and blending the bottoms of the brushes into the sky. So, nice and clean. I've got the water pot just off shot sort of here. Uh, I've got the kitchen paper, I'm going to give it a couple of taps, so it's damp, and then I'm going to very lightly use, soften, whatever brush you use, then soften them down, drag them into the picture. The cotton paper makes this go smoother, because it's holding the colour. Wood-based papers like Bockingford's and Langton's tend to lift off more, whereas a wood-based paper like this allows you to soften it. Uh, and just look how I can get that wonderful effect of a beautiful, dramatic, atmospheric sky. Now that just wants a couple of minutes to dry and while it's drying, down in the foreground here with the same grey, we're just going to pop in a very basic wet into wet distant landscape. So we're going to go up. Now I'm going to pop in some little bits of little sort of stipples and little random little bits of detail here to say there's something in the background there. Take it over. I'm going to feather that down towards the base. Again, using the blending blade to drag the colour down. Make it become part of the actual landscape. Now, treat this as the distance, okay folks? Treat this as the distance, the atmospheric mood in mist. Let's have a go at doing some pine trees or some kind of trees at the back. So, vertical lines. If I clean the brush and squeeze it through the fingers, we can really sort of go in now with this damp brush. And I'm basically, the brush is just, it's almost dry. And I'm going in, I'm just fusing it in a bit to make it look as though there's like a distant sort of forest or something. And you'll see where we're going with this. Drag it into this. Very forgiving if you've got a nice paper and a brush to work with as well. So imagine that's the distant forest over there. Smooth it in a little bit. Now, that does really need a couple of minutes to dry. So what I want to do is I'm just going to make sure that there's no big build-up of colour anyway. There's a bit of colour just here. There's no obvious areas where it's gathering. I'm going to pop this next to my radiator, my heater, my studio. And then while that's doing that, I will keep you entertained by pressing that. Get in the Halloween mood here, folks. Do that. Do that. And watch these weirdly move this one is possessed for the season for the spooky season this one is moving on its own it's stopped don't you just love tacky halloween stuff eh now it doesn't need a long time to dry because we 
are going to work and put some foreground in place. Now people often ask me questions about do I ever change my water? Now I've been painting all day today. I've been painting a few pictures because I'm getting ready to work at an art show in a few days. So I've done this, this sort of quick 30 minute snow scene here. I've done this one as well. And also painted this one, this kind of sunset. These are going to be featured at the NEC art show, uh, which is in Birmingham, in, in, of course in the UK. Uh, starting on Halloween actually, so if you come along to that you can uh, you can have a go yourself at painting them. But I, what I'm trying to get at is I've been using these same two water pots all day. I've not changed the water. So it's a bit of a misconception changing water. Um, palette, you know, this is my own palette. I've got the colour squirted in here. I do clean the palette in between pictures normally, not necessarily every time, get a bit lazy, but you know, I try to. Um, and I'll just mention this one as well. I do apologise if anyone's asking questions, uh, I can't kind of paint in reply. And I am recording this on an iPhone 10. There we go. That is just about at a stage where it's just about dry. Of course, if you're working on a picture at home yourself, you can leave this picture to dry of its own accord. You don't need to worry about it um, sort of. Uh, working while it's damp. If it's drier, it's better. It's better, okay? You'll notice the paper goes a little bit wavy, but it will flatten. When, when it's dry, completely go 100% flat. It always will. It always does. Beautiful. Okay, so let's paint in some kind of creepy house over here. Um, I'm going to sit down for this. I'm going to pull the seat in. So I was stood up for doing the sky. Uh, it just makes things a little bit easier. Um, we're now going to use a combination of the two brushes. So we've got the large blending blade and the small one as well. Uh, I want to just bring in a bit of a creepy... I always think of Scooby-Doo. Now, the inspiration for this, and this is quite exciting, the inspiration is this. This kind of spooky sort of house there, um, which was probably from a pound shop and I think it lights up how it's supposed to but the batteries have gone. Oh, there you go. Look at that. We have a little little light there for you just to get you in the Halloween mood. So that's the kind of thing I'm going for. And then we're going to use the inspiration of this, which is another pound shop thing. Um, that's got no batteries in that one. And this has got a creepy tree at the back. So we're going to have a creepy tree and a creepy house. What more could you wish for? Who says you have to paint something serious? So we're going to be using a couple of colours here, folks. We're going to be using the grey to get the drama and here we've got a dark skin tone. So we've got the dark skin tone, which again is part of the range. Just a quick internet search. Have a look on the website, Watercolour TV, if you like these colours. But you can use some kind of a brown would be okay. Natural grey again. Uh, we'll start with a large uh, blending blade first. Get the palette back. And I'm going to go straight in with the grey. Fairly heavy with the colour. Um, working... Straight in, straight in for this. Now, the paper is still a little bit damp. Ideally, I'd be using a dryer, but the hairdryer makes an awful noise on camera, so we're not gonna use that here today. Now, I mentioned using the skin tone because what I wanna do is I wanna pick up some of the skin tone here. I'll bring the palette into view. You can see I'm, I'm not really worried about cleaning the brush too much, but that sort of brownie color, quite heavy for this one as well. And I'll bring it right across and mix it down so it's the strong grey mixing down with the with the skin there so you get that nice bit of warmth coming in there you go beautiful now while that's a little bit on the damp side notice the misty at the back i want to take a plastic card of some kind uh it doesn't matter what it is i've got a couple here what have we got what have we got Disneyland something card and a Bolton Towers something card. Whatever, plastic card anyway. And basically I'm gonna pop in like a rocky area. You see, I'm literally scraping the color off, okay? And it looks quite effective on pictures like this. So you can scrape the color out. And it, it's using the flat, short edge of the card. Now this works better with thick paint rather than thin. So just bear that in mind. So if you paint strong, it comes off so much easier. Of course, if it's dry, it ain't gonna come off, but look how it gives like a rocky 
rocky effect there. Literally, I'm wiping the colour off in between every little sort of spot. So we can put little bits of... Now this is my, my first time broadcasting live on YouTube, at least this way. I hope it's okay, folks. Let me know if you want to see more of this. Um, I've got a YouTube channel with quite a lot of painting videos on there. And like I say, there's hundreds, if not thousands of hours on watercolour. Dot TV, so check that out as well. Now, we mentioned a creepy house. The smaller brush will give me more detail. Let's 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 get the inspiration here. Look, there it is. Look at that. You can't go wrong with that, can you? Beautiful, beautiful. We're going to take a good, strong bit of grey and stay with it. Don't be afraid to use the grey for this one. And let's go for some some moody, spooky stuff. Now, uh, this brush has got a relatively decent point on it as well but will it be in a Luigi's Mansion kind of house I'm not too concerned about it being too pristine I need a few little white flicks to represent the sort of the light coming from the windows Yeah, nice and strong with the colour, just natural grey, that's all I'm using. Only a few white bits, see I'm sort of leaving them as... So we can fill it in. I'm not too fussed if I was to bring a little bit of the dark skin in, you know, just to give a bit of variation in colour. Because I've got a blending blade, I'm quite confident that I know I can sort of go in and manipulate the colours that's that's the idea of the brush it allows you to manipulate them sort of once they've gone in again we'll just take a bit of that skin tone and just work it in here you can see it working in nice there we go you can see how we're getting that sort of creepy look to it already I'm not sure about the bats maybe we'll leave the bats off I think that people love Halloween. Well, you know, some some do, some don't. But I think it's one of those things that it's just it sort of triggers something in people's minds, and a little bit of inspiration sometimes flies around the room, you know. And and they have painted similar pictures to this at my workshops and art lessons in the past. Um, and of course, for details on workshops, again, have a look at Watercolor TV. You can see I'm sort of making this thing look very, very rickety and old. And you can see where we're going with this, can't you? Trying to get that creepy atmosphere. I'm just going to pop in a few shadows around these rocks here and there as well. Work some of these colours in. There we go. Got a nice, creepy looking building there. Let's just make that roof look a little bit. Feel free to rotate your board, of course. That's something you could always think about doing. And make that roof look a little bit more... A bit more crooked, I suppose, I'm trying to say, really. There we go. And then a bit of a spike on the top, just to help things along a little bit. Now, once that's dried, I'll come back uh, and I'll paint in a few more interesting bits. Now, what I've got here, folks, is just a normal size 6 brush, just a round watercolour brush, because I just want to use that grey on its own. There it is. It looks quite blue because it's about 60% blue in the mixture. So if you're mixing your own grey, just bear that in mind. Um, but use a lot of it. And getting the same colour every time can be a bit challenging. Because what I want to do with the size 6 brushes, I want to go in. I just want to make sure that I've got that little bit of extra detail here and there. On some of these edges. But the more rickety, the more rustic looking, the better this, this spooky house is going to be. Uh, I'm also going to paint in some little gravestones and the classic sort of cross. I mean, instantly just Halloween pops into mind, don't it? A little cross, just a little cross, that's all. I think we'll have a little, little figure here, which is like a carrot with a dot for the head. So a little bit of a slender man just at the side there. There we 
we have. And um, yeah, you know, just add that little sort of cemetery effect at the background there. I think it looks quite nice. And even, you know, it, it depends how far you want to go. But you know, even that little sort of classic sort of Celtic cross, you know, sort of thing just at the side there. It all adds to the creepy vibe of the picture. That's a big cross, that one. Now, I shall be putting a few highlights in that thing a little bit later on. Now, I'm just adding a few around that area. There we go. Then it wants a tree. It needs a tree. We're going to come back to the large brush, the uh, large blending blade. And we're going to take some grey, natural grey. Don't mix over the top of your picture. <laughs> do as I say, don't do as I do. This is, this is, this is the, uh, the uh, dark skin mixed with the grey. So you get that slightly warmer colour, but again, nice and thick. And we're going to go straight in and literally... Close your eyes if you're feeling a bit worried about this one. But I'm going to go in from sort of here. I'm going to go straight up past the moon. A little bit thicker at the bottom. To get that main sort of trunking out. The base of this tree. I'm just going to pop in a bit of a shadow and a few little hints of bits around there. So again, a nice strong sort of line. With the... Uh, branch and detail brush now this is another set of brushes of mine the beautiful branch and detail brushes gorgeous points again all available online quick search you'll find them we're going to use the uh, large one it's like a rigger brush it's like a rigger brush basically lay it flat in the color mix it around look how thick those paint that paint is just the water that's in the brush draw it over the edge you've loaded up the reservoir for the branch and detail brush gorgeous tapered design which means I can quite easily Paint in some nice kind of jaggedy branches. Now this is the kind of stage where you'll find yourself rotating the board around, okay? And I'd, I'll say to you now, don't be afraid about, you know, rotating things around. Because it just makes the whole process that little bit easier. So a, a sort of wintry branches it were against the gorgeous sky it works lovely over the light bit of the sky I'll say that straight away and literally painting in the direction that these things are you know that's might seem an obvious thing to say but you'd be surprised people try and paint them the opposite way feel free to change directions with these things make them look as sort of try and taper them off at the end as well that's a good idea to do that So again, we're getting that nice sort of big branch overlapping. I don't want too many low down because I want to make it look as though this thing's seen some character. So I'll put a few sort of creepy looking sort of zigzaggy branches down here, but I don't really want to have too many of those. Nice. Now I'm going to take that plastic card again that we had before. Oh, there it is. Um, there's no obvious indication where the light is. We've got the moon here. But if you actually go in and actually scrape off a little bit of colour, if it still lets you, you can get the impression that the light is coming in from one side. I'm using the corner here, folks, all right? Now, obviously, this happens while the paint's wet. You could also take it into the branches a little bit as well, if you use the corner. Something to practice. Don't worry too much if this, this bit doesn't work. It's quite... I'll say this is probably one of the more advanced bits of the picture using this because it's thinking about drying time and various things. If you want to be clever where a branch overlaps the main tree, you could simply just sort of do that and it kind of helps it to look as though it's coming in front of the tree. But it's not a bad thing to do and you can put a few bits at the bottom of the tree and it works kind of nice actually, I'm liking that. Now in this foreground area, in fact I tell you what, I'm just... I feel like I could add a few more branches to the top there. So I'm just going to paint in a few more of these. Don't be afraid to put these in. 
on these almost kind of surreal landscapes it can be a little bit more abstract with how you put your paint on so don't worry too much bring a couple of branches up there nice what a difference that makes now I want to bring this foreground closer I want to bring this little bit closer to me and for that it's got to go darker so we've got the skin tone there which is working absolutely fine we want to be a little bit stronger down in this this corner to finish off um, and for that I can use probably the smaller one of the blending blades and again sticking with form and Getting a good strong bit of natural grey here. We can get that on there. Now I want to go nice and strong down here. So I'm just working in a bit of shadow. Now I want to get the water on the brush and soften that out a touch. So I've actually put a shadow at the back of that area where the actual sort of mound is. Let's say it's the mound. And we could do a similar thing over this side as well. If I was to darken down here, you can almost identify a foreground area very quickly by putting some darkness in. Magic. Make sure we've got plenty of dark up that side of the tree. Looking good. We're getting ready to Put a little bit of something here, but then put some light into this and put some light into that. And that's something that will happen uh, fairly quickly. I'm just making sure I've got plenty of shadows and things around this, this foreground here. It's certainly are looking, looking creepy. Hopefully it's getting you in the mood for Halloween here, folks, and trying to do something different. Wonderful. I suppose while we've got some colour on the branching detail brush, we should probably have a nice, just a single sort of large bird or bat or something. It'd be a shame not to. And while I've got this on the brush, I just want to come back to the house for a second and make sure that I'm happy with the little sort of edgings of the apexes and but still maintaining the character all the way through over this corner hopefully you can see probably it's smaller but I wonder like a bit of a rustic fence post or something or some sort of some sort of little sort of spikes or Spires of something. There's the Slender Man. Just painting nonsense basically across that area. We can all do that, can't we? Paint nonsense. Natural great. Now, if I add some dark skin to it, richer, or actually even a bit of blue, to make it really quite a strong, rich, vibrant colour. Grey, bit of dark skin. So it's all 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 the colours really. And uh down in this foreground area and we use this colour to add just a few sorry I'm just putting a bit more in the house actually as I'm talking to you like a little bit of an old rustic Slightly broken railing. I'll not put any decapitated heads on it, shall I? That's going a bit too far with the creepy theme. But it just adds a bit of character to that corner there. And just making sure that we're nice and happy with this. Now, that just needs a couple of seconds to dry off before I finish off with a few highlights on the house. So I want to pop this near the heater again. And one last time for this workshop, let's have the final bit of inspiration. One, two, three. There you go.
what more could you ask for, eh? Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. So people often say to me, how do you sort of paint? Um, you know, do you use a desk? Do you paint on your knee or an easel? I, this is my studio, basically. This is my desk. It's, it's one of the desks that you can sort of tilt a little bit, hence the reason things tend to fall. Um, but pretty much it's, it's, it's all about just uh, being comfortable. You don't need easels for watercolour. That's something I'll say straight away. They're just not needed at all. Um, sorry, that's the chair. I'm just putting the chair up. Just a table, um, and it's absolutely fine. And nice fluorescent lighting normally does the job. Right, I've got some dry tissue, and what I'm going to use now, folks, is my lift out brush. Now, the lift out brush, there's a few of these. Now, this one is the extra large uh, lift out brush, if we can find where it is. There it is. So, I've got my sort of full range of brushes, so I'll just sort of mention them to you now. So these are the blending blades, branch and detail brushes. We've got the tree and texture brushes, Matthew Palmer tree and texture brushes, and then the Matthew Palmer lift out. Very popular for creating, I'm using the water. Again, that water is not to be drunk. You know what I mean? So I've got the lift out, clean it. So in the water, very gentle pinch through your fingers. Just do it off to the side there, but it needs water and we've got tissue because inside this tree, this, not the tree, inside this tissue, because inside this trick, this, not the tree, inside this, this spooky building, I want to put some highlights in. So I'm using the tip of the brush, I'm going in, and putting some more levels, the edges. Just a, a firm tap with the tissue. Now, blend it in by pulling the surrounding colour, and then, using the brush to attach it to the landscape. Can you see how it creates the highlights? Now when that dries off in a minute or two, you'll see that even more so. But anywhere that you feel, you can add little highlights. See the little sort of L shape there? It gives an edge to that, that roof. I mean, I'm going for sort of Adam's family. Other horror comical characters are available. Other horror comical characters are available, of course. Going for Adam's Family Manor, that kind of creepy sort of atmosphere. And it's, yeah, you know, it's just a, a nice technique, lifting out. And to find a brush that does it well is not an easy thing. So get yourself a nice lift out brush. They're not expensive brushes at all, um, but it just makes all the difference using a nice quality set of brushes. There we go. Now I'm just going to pop in a couple of highlights down here. Now the great thing about lifting out paint is it's not destroying the paper at all. It's very non-destructive this folks so it's not going to cause you any any problems or anything like that so. There we go see those nice little it's, it's giving levels it's giving life and interest to the actual building there you go so i can just make that side of the roof a little bit lighter gorgeous can't go wrong with that can you and then you can even use that, that corner of that brush to put a little bit of a doorway in or the impression of a doorway and if you want to get any windows in you could just use the corner of the brush and see i'm putting a bit of light there is a smaller version of the lift out brush, this one being the large, there's an even smaller one as well. But it works the same, a little bit of water on the brush is all you need. Putting a bit of a highlight down there. So it comes off fairly cleanly. Dragging areas of light. It's quite addictive. This you'll you'll enjoy this stage if you get if you get a chance to paint the picture. Remember, you can mix your own grey. Just use a nice dark colour. Uh, natural grey just makes the whole process easier. And if you do get into painting watercolours, you'll find that you use natural grey 
more than anything. Look how that highlight's brought that little part of the, the building forward there. So really adding a little bit of spit and polish onto the picture. A little bit of highlight on that roof, just there, on that corner as well where the moon's catching it. It doesn't really matter on a picture like this where your light is coming from. Nobody's, nobody cares. If you do care about where your light's coming from, you need to relax a bit more because do what works for the picture. I've always taught that. One of the most common questions people ask me at demonstrations and at workshops is, where's your light coming from? And it's just one of those questions people ask all the time. But I always say it's whatever works for the picture. So these highlights I'm adding might not necessarily fit in right with where the moon is, which they do, but if they didn't, it wouldn't worry me, you know. What's more important to me is is doing something that works for the painting, okay? Now at the bottom of this, you could always create a little bit of a footpath. Notice the change in direction there. Look at that, Sh straight away, makes a big difference. Keep cleaning the brush, I mean, that's the tissue I've got. I wanna get a clean piece. Down to the last bit, look at that. Got a brush holder now. Leave that. So that nice bit of footpath there is quite quite an enjoyable thing to do. Um, the thicker the paint goes on, the easier it is to come off. Think about that one. Put a few highlights in the cross there. And things like that make that stand out a bit more. Um, even if you can hopefully see this in this bottom sort of corner here where the little railing is, I could possibly even add a couple of little highlights to the edges of those. I'm not gonna to worry too much about those though. It's a little incidental bit in the corner. There we go. Just adding a few little bits and bobs. Um, the background, maybe a few little highlights here and there. Maybe even the impression of a, a slightly lighter area maybe to say there's another building at the back but just a bit of random stuff really you know um you, you can go for it you really can go for it. light in the sky where the moon is catching the clouds of course you've got the tool for that as well i can twist the brush on the edge of the clouds now i would think about this one this one's optional okay there we go see a little highlight there you don't have to do this, folks. I'd probably recommend that you don't do it. I'm doing this because I just thought I'll, I'll do it. Because I enjoy lifting out. Um, but you've got to be cautious not to take too much off in the sky. But that little bit of a highlight there is actually quite a nice thing to add. Like it's lifting the clouds forward. Just a, a slither. A slither. Which is all I want to do. That's a good Halloween word. A slither. Right, okay, uh, almost there folks. Just want to give it a final couple of seconds by the dryer and maybe even just lighten that corner there a touch. There we go. So it makes that little pot of the building stand proud. Just a touch on that corner. Um, yeah, so while it's drying off just for a few seconds there, uh, it's nice to look back on the picture, of course. Of course it is. Um, so walk back a few steps, have a look back. Um, the thing I can see, I sort of stood up, is if I take some good bit of grey, good bit of thick grey, right at the end, just to say I'm just going to paint a bit of dark on the, this is using that lift out brush actually, um, on the uh, right side of the tree. So making that tree look a little bit darker on one side is not a bad idea. And a little bit of darkness around the base of the building, here and there, around the edge of the footpath, that kind of thing. But I reckon if we say that is a finished watercolour, and of course a lovely way to see a finished painting is to try a mount on it. And there we go. There we have a Halloween spooky watercolour painted live in about 30 minutes. And I hope you enjoyed that. And have a go folks, don't be afraid. And we'll finish off by bringing in the tacky pound shop props and we'll say happy Halloween. And I'll see you again very soon. Don't forget to check out watercolor.tv for lots more watercolor tuition videos from Matthew Palmer. Happy Halloween.